Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to a very special online event today called Three Keys to Unlock Your Powers of Mediumship, an evidence-based path to communicate with loved ones and others in the spirit world. My name is Stephen Dynan. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of the Shift Network, and I'm delighted to be with you here today exploring what has often been pretty far out there terrain, but with, with somebody who is, really has a fascinating life journey to, uh, to open it up to us. You know, way back when I worked for the Esalen Institute in the late 90s, we worked in the field of survival of bodily death and got to really interview scientists and other pioneers and talk about people who are able to be mediums and, and talk with the other side. And it really is one of the more fascinating areas for, with a lot of repercussions about how we understand ourselves, our soul's journey through time, reincarnation. So we're going to learn a lot about this subject from a fascinating woman. Her name is Suzanne Giesman, and she's not only a mystic medium and author, she's also a 20-year veteran of the Navy, which gives her kind of a unique vantage point uh, to address what has often been perceived as a kind of out there uh, subject material. So welcome, Suzanne. Thank you, Stephen. It's an honor to be associated with the Shift Network. Great. Well, I think this is, um, well, I mean, first of all, I'm going to let everybody know we're going to have this hour with Suzanne. I know you're going to be fascinated and get a lot of value, and we're going to have a chance to actually go into a full program with her on sacred mediumship. Um, we'll share a little bit more about that towards the end of the hour. So, um, Suzanne, let's let's start our journey today with a bit about your backstory. Uh, so, I know it's an unusual career arc to go from Navy to medium, so <laughs> let's hear a little bit about what propelled that journey. Yes, I think it's important, Stephen, that everybody understand right off the bat that I had no idea during my entire Navy career that I would one day be working as a medium. I was so focused on that career and went through the progression that most Naval officers do. I became a commanding officer. I served as special assistant to the chief of Naval a Naval Operations, the head of the whole Navy. And the greatest honor was serving as aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That's the head of the U.S. military. So I experienced the U.S. military from the top, uh, flying on Air Force One with the president. But it was a uh, my up close and personal experience on 9-11 with the chairman that really got me asking deep life questions. But I tell people that I guess I didn't learn the lesson I came here to learn on 9-11 because it was several years later that I really got a wake-up call. Uh, my stepdaughter, who was a sergeant in the Marine Corps, was struck and killed by lightning, and she was six months pregnant at the time. And as most people can imagine, that was absolutely devastating, especially when I had no connection with the other side. But I just knew somehow that our daughter Susan could not be gone forever. So I took my husband to a medium, which seemed like a crazy thing to do at the time. He is a retired Navy destroyer captain. And that session with the medium turned my whole worldview upside down. I could not deny that our Susan was right there in the room with us. And so I started uh, writing about mediumship because I was already a published author at that time. And in the process of writing several books, I discovered that I could connect across the veil myself, not only with my Susan, but with other people's loved ones. And I've never been one to do anything halfway. So I studied with the best teachers and just opened up a connection that has allowed me to bring the same kind of healing to other people as that one medium brought to our family when she showed us that death is not the end. It's, a, it's an amazing life story, and and it's it's just shocking to me. Are there people from that your previous in, uh, life in the Navy that have uh, followed you, been intrigued by this, or they've kind of like, whoa, Suzanne went off the deep end? <laughs> You know, Stephen, you would think they might say that, but it's the evidence that I'm able to bring through from those who have passed that when people hear these accounts, they can't deny this is real. And the most important thing is they know me and they know my ethics, and they know how honest I am. And so it's beautiful because it causes people who wouldn't normally believe in an afterlife or the work of a medium to pay attention. So that's a blessing. Wow, that's fantastic. 
So maybe you could ex uh, really do, depict a little bit for us, like, what is it like? Are, are you visually opening up to see spirits or is it more of an auditory process? Or are you kind of like really entering, crossing into and seeing another world? Like, how, how does it appear to you when you start to make contact across the veil? Well, as I, as I teach any of my students, it opens up in all of those ways that you just mentioned, a little stronger for some people than others, but I see images. I don't actually see the spirits out in front of me objectively, but I see images that they put in my mind. I hear their thoughts. I hear songs that they want me to notice. Uh, I absolutely feel their personality. There's no doubt that I capture their essence. And then I start certain I simply know things about them that I couldn't know. So it's an all-encompassing presence that I'm able to pass along to the loved ones here that leaves them saying, that's my loved one, and that's the test of any good reading. Hmm. Well, so that speaks to what something that you obviously take a strong stand for, partially based on your history, is the evidential aspects of mediumship. It's not just not just to feel good or feel reassured that you're really looking for clear evidence that this is real and that that's part of what gives people the reassurance and that, that the information is valid and, and valuable. That is the key point of all of my teaching, that when we ask for evidence, the spirit world gives it to us. And there are so many people like me when I was a client looking for my Susan, would not have been happy with nice, loving messages if they weren't backed up with evidence. And what I show people is that if you ask those in the spirit world for verifiable facts about themselves, they will give it to you every time because they want us to believe that this is real. So we pass along facts such as what kind of work they did, how they passed, their favorite things, and things going on in their loved ones' lives now. I could tell you stories all night long, and it very quickly erases the doubt. I, well, I, we, we don't have time for stories all night long, but maybe one or two that really give an example of like how powerful sure. the kind of evidence can be. I'll never forget the woman that came to me. I had no idea who she wanted to hear through, hear from across the veil. And her husband showed up immediately. He showed us how he died. I won't go into all the evidence, but this is a perfect example of how instantly healing a session can be. This man said, tell my wife, don't you dare take those pills in your purse. And she had told nobody that on the way to the session with me, she stopped at a drugstore and put enough pills in her purse to take her own life if she hadn't heard from her husband because she was grieving that badly. But Stephen, the evidence that, that he brought through that day, including the fact that he knew she was planning her first trip without him to England, that specific, changed her life. I ran into her a year later. It was a different person than the one that sat with me there. Or the woman who was so depressed she could barely work. After a reading with me, when I brought through her son who had taken his own life, the people at work said, what kind of new medication are you on? And she laughed and she said with joy, my son is my meds. It's just tremendous, the healing that a good evidential reading can bring to someone. And that's why it's such a, a blessing and an honor to show people how to get that kind of evidence. Wow. Wow. Those are amazing. You gave me full body chills with the example of the, 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 the husband who said not to take the pills. I mean, wow. So yeah. let's talk about the arc. So you went from just going to visit a medium to like being a medium yourself and it seems like a very advanced one from the level of evidence you're bringing through. So what is the arc? And, it, you know, it seems like you're really wanting to make this more into a science. So it's like a process that's available to anybody. It's not something just for a few psychics to kind of who have gifts. It's really something that we can each open to. So what do you see as the arc of going from, you know, skeptic to full mediumship? The thing, Stephen, is that most people don't realize that any of us can do this because we all have the same equipment. I joke about it. It's called a soul. And it is that finding that perfect balance between the science of this, what it is we're tuning into, vibration, and the, the art of getting out of the left head and letting those in the spirit world guide us, not trying, but receiving. So it's a constant balancing act. 
The reason I've been able to open it up so much is because it's a calling and people will know in your heart, this is something I want to do. I want to be able to heal people like this, or I want to be able to connect with my own loved ones. And once you make that initial contact and you know it's real, if you're supposed to do this, you can't not do it. And so that's what I teach people is the methods to open it up. To me, it's, it's such a burning desire in me to always get better. And the good news is no matter where you are in the trajectory of improving in this work, it continues to get better. So every time we sit with a new sitter and their loved ones in the spirit world, it's exciting. What's going to happen today? How is it going to get even better? It's the most incredible work I could have ever imagined. <laughs> well, sir, that's, that's, amazing. that's amazing to hear. So let's talk about like, what are the specific keys to, to unfold this? So it sounds, I mean, just hearing like the, you know, the empowerment of knowing that it is available, it sounds like an important first step. And uh, so what, what, how, when people want to develop this, how do you start to work with them? The number one key is belief. My whole life, I never knew the spirit world was there, so I didn't try to contact anybody who had died, and I certainly didn't believe I can do, could do it. So that's the first key. You must believe the spirit world is real, which is why I lace all of my classes with these evidential stories you can't deny. And then you need to believe that you can do it too. And I'm here to tell everybody that we all have it to some capability and not everybody's a Mozart, but everybody can learn to play the piano. So once you learn those tools, then it's up to each person. The second key is alignment. And what I mean by that is we need to bring our energetic field into alignment with our true nature, which is spirit. And the basic essence that unites all of us is love. So mediumship is far more than just sitting with a client or a sitter. It becomes a lifestyle of raising our vibration, coming into alignment with who we are, so that when it comes time to connect with a spirit, we're in the right vibration to do so. We're sending out a green light, like a traffic light to the spirit world that says, here I am, let's dance. So alignment <laughs> is the second key. And then the third key is learning to make the shift. I love it that this is the shift network. And I have a little prop here that I actually got in Petaluma, California, Stephen, where your, your offices are. It's the, it's the top of a gear shift, right? And I like to show people that most of the time, most human beings are only in one gear. They think this is the only reality. But we shift into neutral from where we can shift into just about any dimension. And with intention, that's the key to the third key, with intention to connect to those who have passed from this physical world, we just state shift and place our attention firmly on the person we're sitting with and any loved ones who have passed. And it's that simple. They're right there. But I break it down in my classes to little sub steps that make it very clear how that connection is happening, why it's happening. But it's really as simple as a clear intention and just shifting your attention just like that. And the spirit world is right here in awareness because heaven is not some far off place. It's a reality that's completely interconnected with our own, but because our focus is always in the same gear, we miss it. Mm. So when you're talking about alignment, um, is it important to what, what kind of practices you use to bring yourself into that alignment? Because, you know, so you, as you're saying, it's like to really connect with your higher self, to be in a state of love. That's, you know, that's a fairly substantial shift from where most people are operating in their daily, li daily lives. And so have you found that there are particular practices that are more conducive to opening up uh, with uh, mediumship? Without a doubt. Uh, some kind of contemplative practice is absolutely essential. We have to be able to clear space in our mind so that when those in the spirit world put thoughts in our head, put visions in our head, we notice them beyond the normal chatter in our own minds. So some might 
practice what we call meditation. I teach them a seven step method called uh, building the power, the power being the life force that, that breathes us and being present, practicing presence throughout the day. So this is, uh, this does take a commitment, but my gosh, the payback is beyond imagination. I never would have dreamed that I have this team of helpers that's with me all the time, even when I'm not working. The fringe benefits of working as a medium are incredible, Stephen, because I can turn to my my guides at any time for answers to questions. So we learn a lot more about how to talk than how to talk to other people's loved ones. A medium has uh, like a genie in a bottle because we learn that we are connected to higher consciousness at all times. You know, when you were talking about shifting your focus, you referenced the client and then connecting th- um, to beings associated with them. Is it, is it valuable as you're beginning to practice that you have a somebody in that client seat or client role that then create so that you're you're in service to somebody rather than just in kind of by yourself at home? Oh, it's very valuable because um, a connection during a mediumship reading is three ways. It's the medium, it's the client, or we could call them the sitter. And it's their loved ones. I call that the sacred triangle. That sitter's energy is as important to this connection as anybody else's because it's their love that fuels the connection and that draws their loved ones here. Now, certainly as a medium, I get what I call drop-ins when spirits who, mostly those I've met in the past through this work, want their loved ones to know something and they just make their presence known. And I say, oh yes, let me call your loved one. But it's not the same as having a loved one on a computer, on the phone or in my presence, adding that loving energy to the connection. It's magical. Now, when you're calling in specific beings, so, I mean, imagine if somebody sitting in front of you as a client that you're often calling in the specific ones that they want, but then is there, um, is there some sort of methodology to put out the, the bat signal or, you know, to the right beings to show up or is it, or is you yes, just kind of is. say, Hey, we want to call in, call in deceased grandma and, uh, and then she'll show up. There absolutely is. And you do it every day. So does everybody who's listening. It's just like going to Google. You have your search box and you enter in everything that you know based on what you're trying to achieve. So if a client doesn't tell me who they want to hear from, what goes in this search box in my consciousness is any loved one related to this sitter whose presence will serve the greater good. That's what we put in the search box and we shift and here they are. If I know for a fact that someone has a child across the veil, then I get very specific and I say, we would like to hear from the child of this woman with this name. But you have to be very careful not to then block out anybody else related to that woman who may have an important message for her as well, because this is an important point. A medium doesn't just serve the client or the sitter, we're the voice for those who no longer have a voice. So we serve those in the spirit world. Sometimes it's more important for them to get a message through than for the one here to just hear, to tell them, I love you. There are apologies to be made. There's uh, thank, there are thank yous to be given from both sides of the veil. That's why we're called mediums. We're right in the middle. Hmm. So in a way, it's like you're you're helping to bring things to completion that otherwise hadn't been completed with the separation due to death. Without a doubt. And this is the most healing aspect of this work. You show people that their loved ones are still with them. Every reading I do, they tell me something current going on in their loved one's life now to say, I'm still with you. You haven't lost me. But uh, it's the messages that we want to get. What is the purpose of this session? But it's the evidence, Stephen, that allows people to believe the messages truly came from their loved one and not just the medium's imagination. Yeah, because I, I know there's such a strong skeptical bias in us that is like doesn't want to take in information that might be fake. And, and so, yeah, that evidence just penetrates through that veil. Um, so are there specific kinds of evidence that you tend to ask for that, um, just, is it more general or you ask for something really specific? Cause you, you get a sense that that's going to be what, 
what really um, shows that it's real. Oh, ab we absolutely go for specific. Generic is, is something that I don't want at all. Although sometimes generic things truly do point to their loved one. Like she, your grandmother loved baking. Okay, that's great. But now grandma, give me something really specific about you. So I remember a young boy I brought through and in the end of his reading, I said, he's showing me this toothpick that always hung out of his mouth. He wasn't ever without it. And his mother gasped. And there's no better sound from a client than that gasp. You know, she says, everybody that knew him knew that toothpick. And to me, I say, that's one of those things you'd never find on on the internet, you know, on Facebook or Google. That's just that we want that kind of specific information because I want to stress it again, the test of a good evidential reading is you've so captured the essence of that loved one who people thought was gone forever that they say, that was my loved one. I don't want my clients leaving and saying, well, I think they had them. No way. They, I want their whole world turned upside down. And we get that over and over and over again because the spirit world wants that too. Do you go for getting that kind of evidence fairly early in the session so that then everything else they're really open to that sort of like the first step is really getting some clear evidence that proves that the connection's real to, to the client? It is. And I teach a, a, uh, a thing that I call landing it in five. That means give me three to five pieces of information, you in the spirit world, so that by the fifth one, we already know exactly who this is that's coming through. You know, this is a man. He's showing me he died at 70 years old. He says he was an engineer and he says he has cancer and he does feel like your father. Who, who can deny that? My dad died at 70 from cancer. He was an engineer. So it's, uh, it, I want all mediums to be practicing this kind of evidential medium to really, to raise the bar, to take away the skepticism because this is real. Do you find that there's a pretty wide spectrum of skill in being able to develop this or, or, or natural ability might be a better term? Um, or do, is it really pretty most people can develop this if you simply have the right series of steps? I do believe there are some who have a true calling and they're going to be the Mozarts. But I, what I love about teaching mediumship and seeing this across the board is those moments when we have people who had no idea they could do this, when they, they get a piece of evidence and the person across from them validates it or starts crying because it's so meaningful to them. And they say, you mean I could do this too? The more you put into it, like anything else, the more you're going to be able to develop that skill. And the thing I like about this class is the practical tools because you can practice, but mostly you practice by doing it. Mm-hmm. So it's, it seems like one of the things you've emphasized is that the, the becoming a medium is itself an advancement of your spiritual path. So you're coming into a deeper resonance and alignment. And then I imagine that you're also holding space for some, some people, some of the most significant moments of somebody's life too. So there's skills that are getting developed there. And I'd love for you to just share a little bit more about what you've seen in some of the people who have taken this on as their path. Uh, that they're really, uh, they're called into it. Like how have they grown spiritually as a result? It's the most beautiful thing. I can speak from personal example, but also from the circle of, of dear soul friends that I have as a result of connecting with so many people called to do this, that we ourselves are transformed. And once you connect regularly across the veil, you must raise your vibration to do so. So we're, we're, it's like taking little side trips to heaven while here. And when you touch that higher energy regularly, love just becomes so much more a part of your life. And peace throughout the day is, is your normal reaction instead of every once in a while. That's what I was talking about, the fringe benefits to this work. We get why we're here. We understand from those we connect with that it's really important to make your apologies now, to, to dig out the blockages within ourselves so that that connection remains strong and so that when we cross the veil, we've already done all that work. So it's a win-win situation. 
One question, I've, I, I have a lot of curiosity in this area. So I know we want to get to experiential uh, practice in a second, but do you find that it's, um, that is it harder and harder to, ac to access deceased loved ones? The, the further back they are, let's say they've been, they've been gone for 50 years or 60 years, is there kind of like a half-life or attrition over time of being able to access? Or can you call in like even ancestors from much further back? This is one of the questions I'm asked most often is what if my loved one reincarnates before I get to connect with them? And what I've been shown by my guides is that we are part of a greater soul. We could call it an oversoul or a light being, and it's not all or nothing. When I pass from this life, I'm going to be part of that light being, again, more in my awareness, but another aspect of that same oversoul may want to go off and have another experience, even while this Suzanne story is still unfolding across the veil. Uh, the length of time doesn't matter for those on the other side because they don't have time like we do here. But what I have found is that those here want to hear from those who have passed most recently, unless it's a beloved mother who passed when an older client is a child. What a thrill to hear from mom who they haven't seen in 50 years. And they come through just as clearly as everybody else. Hmm. Fascinating. Well, I know you yeah, want to take yes. us on a deep, a deeper dive here. So I want to give you some space to uh, guide us in a practice. So also just really encourage all you who are watching and li listening right now to really take this on and, and to let's create a sacred space together and do do this deep practice with Suzanne to start to open our own gifts in a, in a new way. Okay. Well, the, 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 preface to all of this would be to understand that we all have guides, we all have helpers in the spirit world who want you to know how present they are. And I encourage everybody, anytime you connect across the veil, don't just ask for evidence from other people's loved ones who have passed. We can ask for signs and validations from our own guides, even our own loved ones when we sense a presence. So today I want to guide you through a very brief exercise to show you how easy it is to make that shift to connect with your guides. And then we're going to ask our guides to give us a validation in the coming days. So if you join me, I'm going to close my eyes as well so that I can totally focus on this practice, but just take a moment, close your eyes and take a nice, deep, relaxing breath, breathe in. And as you exhale, exhale longer than you inhaled. Release any stress or tension that you might be feeling. And let's do that again. Imagine a shaft of light that comes from above and grounds you into the center of the earth as you're breathing in, breathe in as if from above and below at the same time. Exhale again, nice and slow. And feel yourself sinking into your chair deeper, deeper, slowing down the busy mind. And just continue breathing slowly and regularly. But now move your awareness to your heart. There's a light there that never goes out. Focusing on that light, you are the one who can turn it up. So imagine your energy field like a sphere around you and turn up that light brighter and brighter until it fills that sphere. If you were in the spirit world, you could see that light growing brighter and brighter. Now sitting in that glowing light, I'd like you to bring to mind someone or something that brings you immense joy. Generate that feeling of joy in your heart. And as you do so, that light glows even more brightly. And bring to mind now something for which you're grateful immediately bringing your energetic field into resonance, mind and heart, always coherent when we're thinking of gratitude. Now, just being aware of that energy field around you, I want you to sense the boundaries of that sphere around you. But you know, that's just one aspect of you in a body. Take in a breath and as you exhale, just a bit forcefully, and I'll demonstrate and go along with you. We're going to send our light outward in all directions on the exhale. Let's do it together. And imagine your light going out across 
your state or your province, your country, out across the oceans, into the cosmos, down through the center of the earth, you no longer have any boundaries. You are limitless, borderless. Your true nature is this light. And now, even though you may still feel the human body sitting in a chair, willingly state silently, I surrender my focus on this body. And with the full intention of connecting with higher consciousness, silently state, shift and place your attention on this limitless nature. And now we invite into our awareness a guide. This could be a guide who's been with you your whole life. This could be a deceased family member. Whoever would like to make their presence known, come now and step into awareness. Take a moment to experience any shift in what you're aware of. Perhaps you sense a presence. Perhaps you see an image. Perhaps you feel a tingling somewhere or get a little tick in the face. Whether or not you sense Anything different, trust that because you set a clear intention from the heart to connect with a guide and issued a heartfelt intention, they are here, present with you now. May my words be your words as we say, oh my guide, thank you for being with me. I so look forward to getting to know you better in the coming days. And I know you understand that human nature likes evidence. And I know that you'll cooperate with me to give me a sign in the coming days that you are truly with me, that this exercise right now is meaningful. And so the sign I would like to have within the next week, if possible, is the following. Whatever comes into your mind now, ask for that as a sign from your guide. Ask it now. My guide, I thank you for putting that thought in my head, for I know that's how it works. You want me to know that you're here, and that thought was our co-created thought together. And yes, I know my nature, I'll go looking for that sign, but I look forward to that magical moment when I become aware of that sign and together we celebrate this new and more conscious relationship together. And I thank you. And now with gratitude, for what we've experienced. Again, whether or not you were consciously aware of a change, trust that an interaction has occurred and simply shift your awareness back to your physical body. Bring your attention back to the heart area. Feel your boundaryless state coming back in until you feel the borders of your energetic field. Wiggle your fingers and toes. Take a refreshing breath. Open your eyes and welcome back. Beautiful. Well, thank you for that. Uh, I think it's it's very intriguing to ask for such a specific sign, too, that it's like a co-created sign rather than just vague. Uh, Like, oh, send me a sign. But like, no, to ask for something. Uh Uh-huh. I'd love to hear a story or two of, of what um, of, a, of a sign that's been kind of like a wow, body chill kind of thing that's happened. 
Yes, I'll give you two very quick ones. I was teaching this to someone once and I said, you know, you should ask for a sign that actually exists. For example, don't ask for a pink elephant. And my guides must have been playing a trick on me because the very next day I went for a bike ride on a rails to trail trail that I had never been on. And I looked up and there was an auto dealership with a full size pink elephant out front. <laughs> but more specific to someone uh, in one of my workshops who asked for this, they asked, for a sign of a penny uh, from their son, who they were hoping was a guide. And when they opened their eyes, the penny was on the floor beside them, had not even been there before. And this father picked it up and it was the year of his son's birth. So uh, sometimes it's that instantaneous. That's pretty darn magical. But uh, most people get signs. At first, we start looking really uh, consciously, obsessively at times. And it's when we forget to look that all of a sudden it appears on a billboard or on a television show or on somebody's license plate or we hear the name. And I recommend everybody write down these magical moments when we get our signs and make a habit of doing this over and over to really cement into our conscious awareness how real this web of connections is. Hmm. You know, it's fascinating. Um, and I just, there's so, there's so many different dimensions to this that we could, that we could explore. And um, yeah, I was just curious if there's anything that... Um, I noticed there was you had a very a lot of confidence in how you were asserting things and and if people are just starting out that might be hard you're like oh I know that we're going to have this I trust that you're you're is there a little bit of a fake it till you make it there like you kind of like in a way you know assert things and uh, affirm things in a more confident way than you might feel when you're just starting out you might put it that way, Stephen, but really there's a reason for that. And it goes back to that traffic light analogy I used earlier. If we're sitting here saying, well, I really don't think this is going to work at all, but I'll do it. That's the red light. If we say, well, I'm not quite sure, but I'll try, that's a yellow light. If we say, I know this is real, I can't wait to see the results, let's do it. That's the green light. And I know you can feel the difference vibrationally in all three of those different attitudes. So it's just a matter of realizing the spirit world needs that green light to work with us and just doing it. And when you do that, you get results. So you just keep doing it. Uh huh. What is there anything, anything you recommend in terms of clearing out maybe fear of disappointment or fear of like, uh, you know, because I'm sure a lot of why people will hedge their bets or be like more skeptical is that they don't want the disappointment. So uh, if it doesn't turn out to be true, so then they're trying to like hedge their bets a little bit. Um, so anything to just to work with that uh, as it comes up in people? Yes. The, one of the keys to this work is awareness. And we become aware of our doubts. We notice them and we just go back to speaking with confidence and acting with confidence. That's why I say that mediumship is not just a, in the moment doing a reading. It's a constant throughout your life noticing where are my thoughts? What am I sending out to the world? So you see how you can't help but just end up giving the green light to the spirit world all the time and your life just starts flowing. The, the transformational effect of connecting regularly with the spirit world are beyond is beyond words. Mm. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about the guides. Um, you know, so do you find that that most of the guides have some sort of uh, biological relationship, like ancestors, or are there? Uh, is it you know? Just share a little bit more what you've seen about the kind of guides that show up, and are they are they are spiritual connections, past lives? You know, more archetypal, like there's a certain, or just what do, what do you see as a, sort of the patterns in who shows up as guides? And the answer to all of your questions is yes. <laughs> we do have loved ones who have passed, but we also have a relationship that goes back through lifetimes with certain guides who have been with us for lifetimes. And we do get those from the higher levels working with us, depending on what our calling is. You know, as a retired Navy commander, I didn't even want to talk about spirit guides when I first got into this work because I really thought that was woo-woo, that was out there. But when you just take that leap of faith and do an exercise like the one we just did and you get this tremendous evidence back from them, it's the preponderance of the evidence that leaves no doubt. We really do have a team of helpers who 
want us to know they're here and we keep uh, working with them. And that's why now I speak of spirit guides with all confidence. I get messages from my guides every day that I post online and the evidence inherent in those messages knocks my socks off sometimes. Hmm. Do, I'd love for you to just hear a little bit more about how you um, work with the guides in the course of the day. So you, do you like have like a time that you're really sitting and listening or is it sort of all throughout the day you're just sort of checking in like, hey, can you give me any info on this situation, this person? This That analogy I used of the gear shift is so useful because it is throughout the day. I just noticed that I don't have an answer for this, or perhaps I'm, I realize I've gone running off doing things in my human mode. And I know there's a better way listening to higher consciousness. And all it takes is a brief pause and a shift in the, in a reading, I shift to the realm right after this physical realm to speak to people's loved ones, but a shift to where I meet my guides, it's something that comes with experience. It's something we can learn to do. And I just ask the question and I feel their presence and the answer is immediate. When I teach a class, Stephen, I don't teach it alone. My students see my guides. They grab my attention. They pace me so that we end on time. They say, don't say it that way. Teach this. It's, it's really a team effort. And we all have that team. How exciting to know we don't have to stumble through life all on our own. <laughs> that's really, that's really fantastic. Well, yeah. um, I just kind of want to, I've been asking a lot of questions. So are there other uh, areas of teaching about the process of developing that, that you want to share, share right now today? The thing that I like to stress with everybody is how important the evidence is because there are skeptics. We don't always know if our client is going to be a skeptic. And I teach people, we want to go for the gold nuggets. We need to raise the bar of mediumship and the spirit world will definitely give that to us. Uh, I hear too many people that, uh, that just give beautiful messages. And I'm telling you, if my husband and I had gone to a medium that just said, oh, you lost someone and she loves you so much, there's a beautiful light here around her, I would not be here teaching mediumship today. The evidence that by grace we received from an evidence-based medium turned our entire lives around. The whole goal of mediumship is to show people that this life is not all there is, that your loved ones are right here with you, and that they have things to say to you. And the evidence is what allows us to believe that this is so. And that's basically it. It always comes back to the evidence for me that balances out those beautiful messages that they have. Mm. You know, there's one other point, Stephen, without the physical body and all of the normal human reactions that we have, I want everybody to know that I have never in talking to over a thousand souls across the veil felt a single one who carried over human anger or human judgment or human criticism. That's all part of the human body and human nature. So I don't worry about lower vibrations. I know we are innately protected by the light that we are. And it is such a joy to connect with people when they show me this sign in a reading from across the veil. That means I have seen the light and it's all about love. So this work brings more life, more love, more light into our world. And can't we use a lot of that? Mm. Well, your uh, passion for this area is really contagious. <laughs> and I, I love the specificity in which you're offering this. So I think it's a good moment to talk more about your upcoming program. And um, first of all, I just want to say that we're very excited by this program because it is the first of its kind in the Shift Network. Uh, and, it's, and it is on answering the sacred call of mediumship. So we named it just what it's called. And, and what Suzanne really holds this dual pole of evidence base, and that is sacred. The sacred doesn't have to mean it's all 
gushy and, and, and it's just, you know, kind of like amorphous. It can also be very specific and factual and evidence-based and that when we hold those together, we actually end up creating more lasting transformation for ourselves and potentially clients as well, if it's really your calling. So this pro program is not for people who, just for people who it's a calling. It's, it can be just for the curious as well. If you want to kind of lean into a new edge for development. You might have taken some psychic development courses. You might have done journey, sermonic journeying, but you're, you've are you been curious about the mediumship phenomenon, not seen as just like an isolated few individuals who have this capacity, but really something that you can have the capacity for as well. Subtitle on it is evidence-based practices to communicate with loved ones and others in the, in the spirit world. So this is a program where you're not just gonna get a bunch of theory, you're really gonna get practices and experiences and those full body chill, aha moments, you're going to get evidence, there's going to be real uh, a real bridge that's built between you and the other side. And that's what Suzanne, her full intention is to do is to create that for you and give you the practices that allow you to do that in, in, the, in the most um, effective and rapid way. So um, Suzanne, I'd love for you to share in your own words, what do you see the value of taking this journey with you? How are people going to come out on the other side? And then you can give us a little tour of some of the subject areas and modules you're going to teach. I love, Stephen, that you mentioned that it's very practice-oriented because we're going to have a chance to practice with our own friends and family uh, between classes, and that's what the fun is because you never know what you're capable of until you try. That's how it was with me. So it is very practical, and yet at the same time, it's it's just such a blessing to find out there's another whole reality that's been here all along and we didn't realize it. So we start off the course by laying the groundwork. I love to teach by sharing the stories because we mentioned that first key is belief. My stories that are verifiable allow people to believe this is really real. And if she could do it, stressing the point that I never once saw a spirit being growing up or in my early adult life. It has come on in later life. If she can do it, then it's possible that I can do it as well. And I love also, Stephen, that you stressed that it's not just for people who want to be mediums. I would say 80% of my students want to do this to raise their own vibration, is you can't help but do that in this class, and to connect with their own loved ones who have passed. So it's beautiful because it applies to people brand new to this work and people who want to improve their skills. But we, we don't spend a lot of time on the, the talking about the details of this is what clairaudience is, this is what clairvoyance is. We get right into the meat of it. And I show people how to expand your awareness, uh, the keys to being a clear channel for the spirit world, uh, steps to raise our vibration, how to practice presence. I have a very specific seven-step method that's uniquely mine that I've taught to thousands of people that knock people's socks off because it takes you deeper, faster, in a more expanded state without letting the monkey mind take you away and making contact right away across the veil. We did a mini version of it in that practice a few minutes ago, but we go into details on that. I show people the variety of evidence that those in the spirit world can give us along with examples of how that's coming through in my readings. And I love that part of the course because people say, you mean I might be able to get that kind of detailed information? And that's that belief key. If we don't believe it's possible to find out not only what kind of truck that person drove, but what color it is and what's in the back of it, we won't try. But I get people to stretch themselves. I teach the dynamics of the three aspects of that sacred triangle we talked about, how your sitter's mood and energy can affect a reading, why a spirit might or might not show up, how your energy can affect a sitting. And then just like we were talking about earlier, we really delve into the human side of being a medium and how our fears and doubts can affect the connection, but how to get past that. It's beautiful. Uh, I'm the prime example of having been there and done that with all of the doubts. Uh, I've been through all of those ways that we talk ourselves out of this, so I know how to get beyond it. 
and then bring it all together and show you how to keep going when the class is over and how to really open this up. Because like I said, it just keeps getting better and better. I wake up every day and I say, what's going to happen today? Because dealing with the spirit world is magical, yet there's nothing magic about it. It's real. Love that. I love that tour. Anything from your guides about the course that about like little spe special surprises that might or special things that might be uh, on the horizon for this program as well? I'm trying to keep my lip from twitching here because I have this one guide that gives me this little thing. It looks like Elvis sneering. I can't do it, but he just tried to do it there to say, you know, we're with you. And what they're saying is there are always surprises because this work is all about the evolution of the soul. And if we're not giving you surprises, then it would get stale. So buckle your seatbelt, basically. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, clearly, I mean, some of our favorite programs at the Shift Network are ones that really give people a method that they can work with for a lifetime. That really is, it just opens up new horizons and it puts you deeper on a path opens up new possibilities. And I, I really love what you're offering here. So I know uh, people are in for a treat. And there's something about, I think, um, I noticed this with Tim Kelly, one of our other uh, um, faculty members who has a background in the military, that sometimes having that military background brings a precision when talking about things that have been often kind of amorphous and soupy. And it's just like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. and I know that you're going to have a very uh, clear methodology for people to follow and work with as well. So that's super helpful. I'll bring your attention to a few other aspects of the program. So you not only get the seven 90-minute class sessions with Suzanne, you get audio recordings, video recordings, and full word-for-word -word transcripts, as well as practices and exercises you can do at home. So we really anticipate this is going to give you um, a, powerful, a powerful journey of opening to a new possibility in your life. And uh, there's some extra bonuses to enhance the, the value of the journey as well. So there's a video teaching and worksheet from Suzanne, Suzanne called Everything is Energy. Suzanne, want to share anything about that bonus? It, simply to let us know why this is possible. The very first connection I made with a man in the spirit world, he, said, he showed me a pair of patent leather shoes and he gave me the name Twinkle Toes. And I didn't even know I was going to be a medium. And this woman in front of me said, my dad was a ballroom dancer and everyone called him Twinkle Toes. And it just blew me away. And I said, how is this possible? How did that just happen? And I knew nothing about energy and vibration, quantum physics. So it's just a little video clip that we're offering people to understand the basics of, yes, you can do it too, because you and everything are energy. Hmm. There's also a, another bonus uh, called a lesson in remote viewing. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but remote viewing was actually uh, researched pretty extensively by the government and uh, as potentially a, a tool for defense and other purposes. And so there's a lot of hard science behind remote viewing. It was used for military purposes as well. So rather in, interesting insights into our capacity to literally travel and, and view something on the other side of the planet. Um, uh, in in a, in a discarnate form, there's an ebook from Suzanne called Mastering Meditation, and uh, I should also make sure that there's a really special bonus, well, a very unusual bonus that we uh, almost never are able to give. And this is actually a mentoring session with Suzanne that you get when you sign up by midnight tonight. So we like to do this as a way to encourage you. If you get a little nudge, a little tap on your shoulder from your own guides or a little nudge of curiosity that you really just have an extra incentive to go for it. And there's really no risk because there's a money back guarantee of your satisfaction. But Suzanne, you want to share about the mentoring session that people get when they sign up today by midnight? Yes, that's something that I do monthly, Stephen, because the teaching from my guides is ongoing. So there's always fresh material, always examples from the spirit world, and these are recorded, and they're two-hour sessions. So it's just extra bonus teaching and always includes how to raise our vibration. I believe that what we're offering is a two-hour recorded session of mentoring from the spirit world through me. Cool. Well, that's the extra uh, carrot to get you to uh, make your decision today. While you have the most information and you're connected to what's happening, it's very easy to get distracted by daily life and kind of move on to other things. And we really want you to, to go for this if you sense that you're going to get the value that we, we believe you will. So uh, we're excited by this program. And there's some, also some testimonials from people who have worked with Suzanne. 
So when you think about the potential benefit of all the all the additional information and guidance and healing that you can get by opening this bridge of connection, it's a really great investment for yourself, for your loved ones, and ultimately um, our world to do this. So there's a lot of great testimonials. There's one from Wayne Dyer that says, Suzanne is an exceptionally gifted visionary practitioner. She, he knows from firsthand experiences. Uh, Gary Schwartz, who's one of the most distinguished researchers in this uh, field, says, Suzanne is among the most gifted of any genuine medium I've had the privilege to meet and work with. That's remarkable because Gary has been one of the leading researchers in this field. So a lot of great testimonials uh, about Suzanne and her work. And I think you can just feel from this hour together just how authentically committed she is to it and that it's really coming out of the noblest place of service um, to you and your, your transformation and, and ultimately the healing of our world. So Suzanne, really fascinating hour. I've, I've loved it. I'm sure other people have as well. And um, I just have a few minutes left in closing. Anything that's still on your heart you want to speak directly to the folks who are considering joining you or anything maybe that from your guides that wants to be spoken as well? Yes, I am continuously surprised by the healing potential of this work. My husband and I have lost count of the number of people who said, that reading with you saved my life. Because when we connect people with loved ones who they thought were gone forever and show them they're right here, it gives them a reason to live. They go from hope to knowing that this is real, that they're not lost, that they're still with them. So most people want to feel that they're of service. This is a call to service and ability to serve people beyond anything that I ever imagined. And to be able to share that with you is such a gift. And I just want to remind you, you're not just serving a client or a sitter. You're serving those who no longer have a voice and you're serving your own soul as well, because through this work, we all grow together. Mm. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Suzanne. It's been a really delightful and eye-opening and, and fairly practical hour as well. So thank you for this time together. And thank you for offering this program with us through SHIFT. And I know um, we're going to get a lot of people who get really exciting new things open up through it. So more to come. When you get registered by midnight tonight, you get the extra mentoring session from Suzanne. So thank you all. Many blessings. Have a great day.